welcome once again to the sage. Ah, oh, today I'm happy. I'm standing because we're going to revisit an issue we've dealt with a few times before, but you can never do something that is good too many times. We're going back to one of our creative arts. We're going back to the issue of fashion, fashion designing, tailoring, and generally looking beautiful and looking good and being happy. As usual, I am your host, Dr. Kechi Obwago. It's been a wonderful ride with you. It's been a wonderful treasure hunt. And the more we journey with you, the more excited we get because we uncover even more wonderful treasures. Today, we promise you a wow of a time. And so it is about fashion. It is about creativity. You will remember that we've been along this road before and we brought to your attention two amazing young people that C4C proudly owns as fellas who have done great things in being creative, in being fashion designers, in tailoring. They've wowed our audience. Ah, but we have more in store for you today. You see, for me as the sage, this particular show was one I felt impelled to do because I finally persuaded a remarkable lady to come, be our guest, and talk to you on this show. It's indeed not even one, but a double package, a double treat. Not only did I finally convince her to come, she's brought her amazing daughter along with her. Who is this lady? What is this all about? You see, when you host a show like this, believe me, even though we stand in front of a camera and we smile and we talk, there are many behind the scenes anxieties and preparation. And I think perhaps for more for women than for men, one of the things that I feel is looked at and perhaps judged, admired or not liked by my audience is the way I look, what I wear. And so for any host or hostess, it's a major point of potential anxiety. But not for me. Not for me. I have had the good luck, the blessing of having an absolutely wonderful costume designer. I don't know whether you've noticed in all our previous shows that for every show we've aired, there's been a wonderful, fabulous name in the credits. Natasha's grandeur, an amazing, an amazing business. Practically everything you've seen me wear has been by this amazing organization, fashion designing organization. Today, I'm decked out. I like to think I'm decked out. Totally, totally from head to toe. This is the first time indeed I'm wearing a headgear, but it's just to show you the expertise, the beauty, the skill, the crafting of Natasha's grandeur. The head, the dress, everything. And so I find that for me, it show, I don't worry. She's always delivered. I just say, I have a show coming and something comes packaged, is sent down and it fits to perfection. It is exactly the look I need for that particular show. And today, to my audience, I say, you should really be paying me for this one. But anyway, don't worry. Thank me afterwards as I unveil and introduce 
this wonderful designer to you in this show as perhaps another step in bringing talented, creative fashion designers homegrown to your attention. Again, as I have said in a previous episode, Nigerians excel in this. I truly believe we're the best in the world. Our colors, our ideas, the way we wear them, our pride in them. Our functions are like a special party by peacocks, full of color, full of vibe, and full of joy. Because I believe God created us to be happy. When we find things that are natural parts of creation and culture that aid in this, it is something to rejoice in, something to be a, proud of being a part of. And something we will also bring out in this beautiful, spectacular show coming along is the fact that within each of us, the good Lord instills a passion. Indeed, I as a person tend to believe that the very reason for existence on this earth is to discover your passion and to follow it. Someday, when we get to the great beyond, when we get to our heaven, I am convinced that what the question, the one most important question the Lord will ask you is, what did you do with the passion I gave you? Give an account of your accomplishments in that regard on this earth. And so having said that, stay with us in the next segment as we introduce our amazing guests to you. Thank you for being with us. Welcome back to The Sage and thank you for having stayed with us. Ah, I'm almost reluctant to go ahead because I'm sharing a precious trade secret. My worry is that having unveiled the duo to you, they'll be so busy, they wouldn't have time to attend to my own fashion needs anymore. Never mind, it's a joke. Natasha's grandeur has done such a wonderful job for the many years I have known her, not just for the sage, but that I have known her as my savior when it comes to issues of fashion and dressing, that I have complete confidence in her. And I am more than happy to introduce her to many of you out there. She deserves the recognition, the acclaim. Please join me as I introduce two wonderful ladies who've accepted to be with us on set today. Mother and daughter with an amazing story to share. Mrs. Amaka Okuta, you're welcome on the stage. Thank you very much. And Miss Amaka Okuta, you're also very welcome on the stage. Thank you for having me. Let me start with the older Amaka Okuta. Welcome once again. Thank you. The brains, perhaps, um, not perhaps for sure, behind Natasha's grandeur. Something you've invested love and passion in for over perhaps 40 years. Please tell us about yourself. Let me just say, even before she says that, that as you will find with many talented people in the country, particularly people in the fashion industry, they often have backgrounds that are different from what they are now doing. Mrs. Amaka Okota is an honors graduate in chemistry. That's where she started. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Amaka Okota is a lawyer. <laughs> is a very busy practicing lawyer. So yes, they are not just Natasha's grandeur. They are solid professionals behind that name. But Mrs. Okuta, please let's start with you. Tell us, how did you end up being Natasha's grandeur? Well, like the host has uh, said, Natasha grandeur sprung from a passion. 
my passion for the love of flutes. Basically, I'm an artist. I exhibited that very early in life. As a child, I was preoccupied with painting, the aesthetics, I loved colors, I loved painting, I loved sewing. And um, my mother was a trained um, fashion designer, dressmaker, who studied fashion designing in the 40s in England. She went to Paris Academy of Fashion. That's where she trained. So growing up, as, as far as I knew, we were always beautifully dressed. She would make beautiful clothes. And then um, I discovered I was, I loved watching her so. I loved uh, helping her out and learning how to do little things like hemming. And, um, and I also remember that uh, she used to make lovely things for the house. We had beautiful tablecloths, which she embroidered herself. And I knew I spent hours doing the embroidery. I love mathematics, I read physics, chemistry, and I did very well in those things. So it was a very difficult choice. My parents couldn't just imagine uh, training me, asking me to go and do fine art when I, I had the brains to tackle the other difficult uh, subjects. So I now found myself reading chemistry, but I never lost my passion for the beautiful things. Even in school, I remember, when I was uh, in the university, I was the uh, dressmaker for the family, for my siblings. I made their clothes and um, we all always beautifully dressed. And even at that time, we were very professionally made clothes. They looked so nobody knew that uh, they were made homemade. So finally, I found myself being drawn to making it a career. For one thing, I was beleaguered with requests from friends and family. I was always slavering away, sewing for people for free. And then I now realized that why don't I and make I it lucrative? I must admit I was one of those people she <laughs> sewed for, for free. I said, why don't I make it lucrative and earn some money from it? So I now established fully as a dressmaker. And, and, and I've continued ever since because of my passion for it and the demand and I loved doing it. I found myself today starting off as Natasha until my daughter took over and came to <laughs> Natasha's graduate. <laughs> let, let me make a public confession mm. and say, yes, I have known Mrs. Amara Kota for many years. And I was one of those who sponged on her. I remember as I was training as a medical student, as far back as that, that we used to, I used to get her to sew my beautiful party wares and many of the things I wore in the university. And it has indeed continued through, our, through the long years of association, whether it's for a wedding or even my children's weddings and so on. She, all we needed to do was, all I needed to do was reach out and say, please. Uh, and all the outfits will be made, the bridesmaids, the bridal, the, and so on and so forth. She's been a pillar, a pillar a wonderful, wonderful pil um, pillar to have behind one. Mm. So, yes, so you, so in the end, really, what you're saying is that the real passion um, for you mm -hmm. is actually the, the fashion designing it's and dressmaking. fashion making. designing and dressmaking. Working with colors, beautiful colors. I still do my tapestry and things like that. I still love them. I just love anything that is um, creative, creative art. And I do paint. And, and do you think your degree in chemistry, uh, your honours degree in chemistry was a waste? Not at all, because um, part of the reason why I'm good and, and then professional about it is because I apply a lot of mathematics. So if I want the circumference of my sleeve, which is a complete circle, I apply the formula, mathematical formula, and I get it to the exact tenth of an inch. So it's, and then in pattern drafting, if you come to my workshop, I work with lots of rulers, curves, all kinds of funny looking curves. Other dressmakers will come, what do you do with this set square? What do you do with this curve? You see, every curve has a use. Mm -hmm. And that is what we lack in uh, fashion schools in Nigeria. They don't learn to really construct patterns. When I sew, I have to make a pattern. I have to draft a pattern so that it's usually very accurate. 
And I know that um, when you saw not just the Nigerian free fashion, but um, one of my favorite uh, things I make are tailored clothes. And you can't just... I can, I can testify to that. And I was known really for... Formal professional suits come made out with, perfect. Made with Niger African fabric. Made with African fabric. I was very popular for doing that, you know, suits and jackets and trousers, trousers, suits and everything. Made with Nigerian fabric, Adire and um, other prints. So it's been, it's, it's a hard work, but I hardly realize it's hard because um, it's my passion. I enjoy doing it. I enjoy doing what I do. That, that, that in a, to me, sums it up, really. It's my passion. And when you do what is your passion, you enjoy doing it. And if you enjoy doing it, you're likely going to give it your best and you're likely going to persevere. Uh, and so, indeed, she has. She's um, Mrs. Ukuta that I know, like I have said for so many years, is a gentle, humble human being. Um, and seems happiest when she's doing exactly this, designing those clothes, making it for you, and taking on the burden of whether you are happy with them. Let me, let me divulge a secret to you, all of you, our guests watching, that almost without fail on every show after immediately i finish one of the first calls i get is from her saying oh that outfit you know it, it's just the way we wanted it. it was very nice i like it and i like the way it was showing on you on television and it's a great moral booster if even if you my audience think i'm talking nonsense at least i have one <laughs> ardent admirer who thinks i'm looking good <laughs> And, and so that cheers me up. Thank you for being such a loyal fan of the sage, but more importantly, for making the sage, helping to make it what it is today. But it comes, it's a two-sided coin. So to the audience, I say, if there's any time you think I wear what you don't like, uh, the set has things you don't like, Natasha Grandeur is to blame. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> We will come back to you, but let me turn to Miss Amako Okuta um, and say, Amako, welcome once again to the show. Tell us, for you, what is your stake in all this? What is your role? Thank you for having me once again. I am, first of all, my mother's daughter, and just how she got her passion from watching her mom. I grew up watching her make clothes as well. So I guess I'm following her footsteps by also having this passion to sew or for love of fashion from watching her. And it's not every child that watches their parents do a particular thing that falls in love with their parents' profession or what they do. But for some reason, I enjoyed everything, how patterns come together. It was always a mystery because truth be told, she loves mathematics, but I don't. <laughs> so it was always a mystery. How do you put this and this together? And then explaining to me, oh, this is how you do your pattern drafting. It was amazing to understand how this color fits into this blouse and how this sleeve fits into this. So I, I fell in love with fashion. And funny enough, my nickname most upon a time was Fashionista because I was always <laughs> put to The Fashionista. <laughs> this and this together and never not nicely dressed because I'm coming from a home of fashion. My ideas, I, to date, I run through, I'm going out, I run through what I'm wearing by my mom. Oh, does it go well? Because I believe so much in her expertise and experience. So um, just like her, she studied something else in school and I studied law and I'm a practicing lawyer, but still that did not kill my interest and passion in mm -hmm. fashion. Mm -hmm. Before going into school, I would um, stay with her, learn how to sew, always knew how to stitch because growing up in a home like that, you have to know how to stitch your clothes. I wasn't always running for help. I'll stitch a job and move on. 
So growing up, I would learn middle work. I remember sewing my finger so many times <laughs> with the machine and everybody, the tailors would be worried, oh my God, this is happening. And I would reluctantly cry and come back and still sew my finger again <laughs> until I stopped sewing my finger. So um, I, I, I intend to continue to push this passion for fashion forward. Despite the fact that I'm a practicing lawyer, it still does not kill my interest in fashion. I mean, with the world we're in today, you can do what you want to do. You're, you have your profession, you have your passion, and it can even transcend into my profession full-time. Only time will tell. So, that's amazing. I didn't even know people stitch their fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, it's good to tell us some of the hardships. In, in being an apprentice in learning. Um, but now you, you look at your mother's business through grown-up eyes. Um, children do grow and assume their own identity. Um, so as you look at Natasha's grandeur, what, what, have you tried to influence it in any way? What has been your contribution? Okay, yes. So obviously it started from me saying, oh, I want to study fashion and everything. But my mom believing she's like my best teacher, said, what else do you like? Study that. And then I did. And having studied law, I got to learn about corporate work, businesses, and things that involve legal um, realities of the business. So I put my legal knowledge into the business as well, advising on some certain transactions. You want to employ this person. You need to have this. You need to have that. And then I looked at it and saw... It's a name Natasha because her name is Natasha. And I said, I want this to evolve into something that if they type the name, something will come up. And then I decided, let's rebrand. So I registered the name and rebranded into Natasha's grandeur from just Natasha. So we're mm -hmm. duly registered in Nigeria. So if you type, it's a legit business. Nobody has fear of, oh, what if we disappear? Nope, we're not going anywhere. And... With that, I also um, thought about, okay, so with this modern age in my generation, especially the evolving of the involvement of social media has come to stay and keeps evolving every day. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, so how can Natasha go from custom made clothes and referrals, old clients, old clients, family members, how can we bring new people? How can we help them? <laughs> So I, I also opened a social media page, uh, particularly on Instagram, because mm -hmm. I believe Instagram is a world of fashion, anything social. Everybody comes to Instagram a lot. Mm -hmm. So I opened an Instagram page, posting on um, the Instagram feed, posting on stories. And I get questions. People send DMs. I didn't even expect to get engagement so soon because it's not easy to engage a page on social media you have to trust but i guess with each post i made people began to see okay these people actually know what they are doing and i get questions oh mm -hmm. can i have this how much is this because they are able to order mm -hmm. and we've been able to get a few clients that we don't even know from social media um so that's one of um part of things i've done and also evolve by introducing new designs okay because probably mommy was used to her kind of clients you know. what do you mean her kind you mean people old like people. me <laughs> well not old people but <laughs> not, my <generation. laughs> not my generation so my generation you know how mommy says rip jeans is crazy she didn't understand the concept of rip jeans for the longest time so we have certain kind of things that okay this color fits into this and i'm there to break the barrier i said this actually goes you are an amazing fashionista what i've learned from you and i know that this one we can do this or this design let's try this out and see if you know it will work so you're actually bringing modernization and innovation to her business and you also be acting as her lens for the younger generation the, the younger fashion trend yeah, isn't that exciting? Is it? Has have there been fights and you no know, no? Does yes. mommy accept them easily? No, sometimes she says some <laughs> designs are impossible. That this cannot work. Say, yes, Let's try. So and I'm a very bad artist. So when I sketch my rubbish, 
she now makes it into something alive. I said, okay, so this is my idea. So can you, let's try and sketch it together because you, I don't sketch as well as you do. So they were sketching and she's like, this is not possible. I said, it's possible. Let's try it. Let's practicalize. And we come out and it's actually possible and it's beautiful. Creating new designs together is really, really amazing. That is, that is, that is really, really um, interesting. Um, and I see so many wonderful things about this. Um, let me say that, first of all, I, we feature a great deal on about fashion. Like I said, it brings joy. It is a, a passion, but also it is a potentially rich enterprise. It is one that many, many young people can indeed get involved in, not just young people, anybody. I, I, you know, I have also found that at any age, actually, you, if you follow your passion, you can, you know, you can, you can start it. Mm -hmm. And so we can never say too much. The clientele, you know, the market is huge. Everybody wears clothes. Uh, we all like lovely clothes. We never stop making. We don't make clothes because we need them necessarily. We make clothes because it brings joy and it's it something new. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is an area that um, is rich in terms of enterprise. We will discuss more. Stay with us. We'll be back in the next segment. Mm -hmm.